In this presentation, we'll take a look at customizing our reports, including our income statement and profit and loss. Get ready, because here we go with zero. Here we are in our not-for-profit organization dashboard. Let's go on over to Excel to see what our objective will be. So here we are in Excel where we have our trial balance. You'll note that within the trial balance, when we convert it to the financial statements, we're going from basically a one column type of activity to the financial statements where we have such as the statement of activities now breaking out by column for items with restrictions and without restrictions. So for example, then if we went over to our item in kind of more of our two dimensional type of setup, we had to show two accounts to show that in an up and down vertical type of format contributions with restrictions and without restrictions two separate accounts. When we look at the statement of activities, we can use one account called the contributions and then break them out by column with and without restrictions. So uh, zero has a great formatting tool that really allows us to, to do this type of formatting thing uh within within the system so let's go back on over to zero let's open up the income statement so i'm going to go to the accounting accounting drop down we're going to go on down to that income statement so let's be opening up the income statement i'm going to hold down control going to scroll up just a bit to get up to that one two five that's where i like to be that one two five now if i go to the report settings over here on the side if we go to the report settings you'll recall that we have the unrestricted and restricted items these are basically filtering options now, currently, they, they're all included, so this is going to be included everything. This line item over here includes everything that's in every category, restricted, unrestricted, and so on, every, all the subcategories within it. If we were to filter, for example, if I was to check off a filtering option, let's, let's take a look at just the time restriction. So I'm going to just say, I just want to see the time restriction. Now, when I check that off, what that's telling me is that only show the time restriction. So that's going to take away basically everything. Uh, to just to just show the time restriction so then if I was to update the report now we're filtered down to just showing that item that had the time restriction we're on the contributions that are restricted so that's great we could do it we could go back and forth and we could restrict the items in that way but then we're only seeing one column how do we get multiple columns and zero has a great tool for for doing this we can make a report with multiple columns which much more flexibility than you might see in other software such such as a quickbooks quickbooks has some set settings but zero has a little bit more flexibility and once we save it there we can actually customize it here and do more within the the, the actual database with uh with different reports rather than having it to rely on excel for some of these added columns so let's take a look at that so let's go back up top i'm going to say let's go to the reporting by the way the trade-off of that of course is it's a little bit more complicated to do that type of adjustments so there's a trade-off but once done then more more of it will be in the database program so it's not too bad to, to do it i think it's a it's really a neat neat tool and a good trade-off uh, you know to, to be looking at it once you get these reports set up they could be really helpful so we're going to go down here to do this we're going what we want to imagine happening here is of course just like the, what we saw in excel we'd like this to basically be the total column and then i'd like to see the restricted and then the unrestricted and then later on, maybe some reports that'll show us the sub accounts for the restricted and unrestricted items. So let's first just think about a report that has unrestricted, restricted, and then the total column uh, here. So I'm going to go back to the edit tab. So we're going to go down to the edit. Uh, this is the first time we've been there. Edit on the bottom left. So we're going to edit. And this is going to be an editing field. Now I'm going to hold down control, scroll back down. So this is kind of like the format of, of the report. So we've got all the accounts will be included, even if there's no numbers in it over here. This report, by the way, can look a little bit intimidating if you haven't seen it before. But once once you get it down, it's it's really not too, it's really useful. And and note that you know don't worry about making adjustments in here because if you mess up, then you're not saving it to the. This isn't adjusting the actual profit and loss or income statement template unless you save it to the main template. But I would never do that, right? We're just going to save this as an as another report that we can go to so you're not messing up the main template you can always basically delete this thing and then start over with a fresh income statement so don't like worry or get a little get scared about it or anything we're going to go up here so what we're going to do is we're going to add a column so we're going to go add a column we do that up top this little item up top says column so we're going to add a column and then we have down here we have the the categories of restricted and unrestricted so those are the ones we want i'm going to choose the unrestricted first we'll choose the unrestricted and then we've got on the right our options for the unrestricted items. So I'm going to say the search tracking item. 
So what I'm gonna do is if, if I choose all of them, the thing that's kind of funny is that if I choose all of them, then it, it doesn't in include any filter. It'll include both the restricted and unrestricted. I need to filter in some way. So I can't choose all of them. And it's also a little bit funny here in this, un this unassigned one. We'll recall it'll pick up unassigned items, whether they be unassigned to this category or the other category. So I don't want to choose unassigned. What I want to do is I want to choose all the items that are in there here, 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 and here. And then I'm not going to choose the unassigned and that should, should pick everything up. And then what I'll do is I'll make another category called unassigned. And that, and for that category, that'll be used for internal purposes to show me if, if something hasn't been properly assigned, because that category should be zeroed out by the end of the day that's that's what we're imagining to happen here so we're going to pick these three items got to be filtered in some way if you pick all then you may not have a filter applied and it'll just pick everything from both categories unrestricted and restricted okay so let's go ahead and say uh, there fiscal year that looks good now the other thing that's a little bit weird is is the report name currently i can't change it down here but or the column name but i can change it over here and then it'll, then it'll change that so i'm just going to double click on this blue column name and I'm going to call this uh, unrestricted, unrestricted. And then that should change it over here. So that looks good. Now I'd like to pull the unrestricted to the right of the total column. 2020 is going to be our total column. So I'm just going to go on the blue tab, left click on it, and go and drag it. Do a good old dragging process to the, to the left side. So now we've got unrestricted and then the total. Now we want to add a restricted column. So I'm going to go back up top. I'm going to do this again. I'm going to add another column. And we're going to say, now I want the restricted items on the bottom. I'm going to say restricted items. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I only have one item in there. If I choose all, then it may not do any filter. I don't want to choose the unassigned because then it might pick up unassigned from both categories. So I'm going to pick just the restricted item within it, which is going to be time. So I'm going to pick up the time. And there we have it. And then I'm going to change the uh, the name uh, over here by double clicking and I'm just going to delete the 2020 and just say time that looks or actually I don't, I don't want it time I want it to be restricted restricted that's what we want that's what we want and then that'll change it over here and then I'm going to drag it to the to the left again I'm going to hold I'm going to drag that blue thing to the left and so there we pick that up as well now, the other thing, I'm going to add another column just for our check numbers, and that's going to be the unrestricted items. So the unrestricted items I want to have as, as basically a check number in case anything is in unrestricted. So I'm going to add another column, and I'm going to say uh, unrestricted here, and, uh, and then I'm going to pick the dropdown and unassigned. So unrestricted, unassigned. So I want to pick that because that, if there's anything that's unrestricted, I want to go back in there and pick it up. So then I'm going to go back over here and say unrestricted, unassigned. And I'll go back over and I'll say unrestricted, unassigned. Unrestricted, I forgot the N. Unrestricted, unassigned. And then I'm going to make one more. This is probably overkill for the restricted unassigned. I think the unassigned will show up in both columns, whether it be restricted or unrestricted. But I'm going to do one more just for the overkill here. And then I'm going to say one more column. And then I'm going to go to restricted. And then I'm going to say that uh, this is going to be the unassigned for the, for the restricted items in case there's anything in there so that we can reassign them. This will be our worksheet report. And then I'm going to say that uh, the name is going to be restricted unassigned. So we'll say restricted unassigned. All right. So let's see what that looks like. So now we've got the unrestricted, the restricted, not included the unassigned areas because we want to assign everything out. If they haven't been assigned, then we'll go in and assign them. And we'll use these unassigned columns, by the way, for the expenses, as we talked about a little bit before. We'll see the items in this unassigned column. That'll help us to go back into it and then and then assign them to the proper category. So let's go ahead and say done and see what this looks like. So I'm going to say done. 
and here we have it so now we've got our report where it's breaking out between unrestricted restricted and then the 2020 basically our total column and we might want to call this basically the the total so i could go back into the edit layout we could adjust that column as well so if we go into the edit layout and i just adjust the title for it then i could double click on the title here and call it the total total all right and then okay and then say done again and there's going to be our worksheet report so we have the the construction restricted and then the unrestricted and to be honest it's duplicating over here i'm not sure exactly why it is because these have been assigned these aren't un, un assigned items they've been assigned to the restricted was time and the unrestricted i think we assigned it to uh to a category as well for fundraising but what I'm really looking for is down here, notice that these two columns should add up to the total. If they don't add up to the total, that's when we, we need to go into this unrestricted and see what the difference is. For example, of course, with the uh, expenses, we have nothing here and then the 35,800. And that's because it's in, in the uh, uncategorized or unassigned column. And we need to go in then and assign that, which we will do at the end. So at the end, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna enter these expenses in and then at the end, we'll go back and we'll go back and assign these out all at the same time. And I think that separation of duties will make it a little bit easier. So you can imagine then this is the report that we would want to run. This is kind of our worksheet report that we can always go back to and, and see if everything's assigned properly. Then we can save another report, which will be our final report, which will not include these two columns. Because once we reassign this to the proper categories, then we don't need these two columns and we can run this report to just show these three columns and that will be our our report that we can generate and and give to somebody and then uh, we can generate another report that will have the unrestricted breaking out by the categories by the categories by their nature and we'll talk about that later and we can have the restricted items broken out by their category so we could see their nature so we can have our worksheet report here then we can have our more detailed report that will break down this column of our worksheet into the into the categories the programs the admin and so on and then we can have our our another report that breaks out the restricted items into its categories for restrictions in this case only including time so far but we will have other restrictions as we go so then uh, we might want to rename this re report so we might call this uh, worksheet let's say income statement worksheet let's say income statement worksheet this will be kind of like our internal report this isn't the one that we'll we'll provide outside because outside once we complete everything we'll make another one with, which will just have these three columns and then what we want to do is save this report so i'm going to go ahead and say save custom report now we're not going to make it as the default that's the thing because you don't want to overwrite the actual income statement so never check that box off is what i would say so it's going to be an income statement worksheet, income statement worksheet that I'm going to go ahead and save that. And this could be kind of our default report that we'd go back to for the income statement. So then if I was to duplicate this tab, let's go back up top, duplicate this tab. And then uh, we'll take a look and see if we could find this worksheet without you know losing it. We're going to go to the accounting drop down up top. We're going to go to the reports then see if we can find where we where we saved this custom report and we're going to say that we're in the custom tab so we want not in the summary but custom and there it is there's there's the income uh statement worksheet now note if i hit this little star because this is going to be a report that we're probably going to work with a lot then that'll include it in our favorite reports and if i select the drop down then you've got uh the, the account transaction the age payable and so on here's our worksheet report and it's so important that we might not even we might replace some of the other ones so if i go back to the summary report we might say hey look that might even be more important than even having the actual income statement there we might work with our worksheet more than the income statement and we may not need the aged receivables i'm going to remove that the aged payables the sales tax report i'm going to remove that the accounts transactions i'm going to remove that from our favorites from my favorites, you can remove it. <laughs> you can do whatever you want on your side, but I can. And that'll leave us with the balance sheet, the income statement, and the income statement worksheet report that'll just be in our drop down. And then we can go right there. We can say, okay, we're going to our income statement worksheet for our not for profit organization. And that'll, that'll give us our more detail. And all we have to do then is, is change the dates. And we'll have that formatting that will help us to have this initial breakout. 
Then we'll, again, we'll make two other reports that'll break out the detail here. You could make one long report, the two that has, you know, all the detail, the unrestricted and then, and then the detail uh, within it. But so that, that, again, that flexibility is great. But, but also note that, that, like I said, we'll take more time to organize these reports and make those, make those custom reports. But it's really nice that we can break these out and then generate and actually make the reports in the system exactly the way we want it. Uh, and then, and then uh, use that to, to make more of the finalized reports so that we can, we can do less in something like an external software such as an Excel, which we'd have to do. Uh, you know, time to time as we go. So in any case, we'll talk more about the formatting in future presentations. So that's it for now. Let's get out of here. <laughs>